Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a how-to guide for how you install Sid Meier's Gettysburg on a Windows 10 machine. I think this will probably also work for Windows 7 as well. It should theoretically work for any 64-bit uh, Windows operating system, but I'm doing it on Windows 10, so that's all I can speak to. Now, the reason I'm doing this, I did a li er, live stream and a YouTube series on Sid Meier's Gettysburg earlier this year, and I got a bunch of comments of people asking me, you know, how do you, in how do you install this? And it was a little bit, I tried to explain as best as I could in the chat, but I thought it would make sense if I made a video. Additionally, I was listening to Three Moves Ahead the other day. I was catching up on some old podcasts of theirs that I never caught when they originally came out. And one of them was dealing with uh, sort of the best strategy games of 1997, which is one of these sort of hallmark years in the world of not just strategy gaming, but just all gaming in general. You know, they were the, the, the folks on the podcast, Troy and Rob, and uh, I think TJ Hafner was on there as well, were talking about uh, games like Imperialism, Close Combat, and Sid Meier's Gettysburg. Um, but they were all kind of lamenting the fact that it, there's really no easy way to get the game to run on a Windows, a modern Windows machine. And at least in my case, I found a relatively straightforward way to do it. And I wanted to at least share what's worked for me. Again, no, I can't guarantee that it'll work for everyone, but it did work for me. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and share that. Additionally, if you're not familiar with Three Moves Ahead, if you don't listen to it, uh, I highly recommend that you go into iTunes or go into Google Play or your podcast uh, area of choice and listen to that podcast. It is probably with, well, not even probably, I would say it's without a doubt uh, the longest running strategy podcast and also has some incredible hosts who do a great job. They're very knowledgeable. Uh, and they cover a wide range of strategy games. So it's a really good listen. If you don't already listen to it, uh, I recommend you check it out. And I'll throw a link in the description to their website if that's if you want to take a look at them. Uh, but without further ado, how do you install Sid Meier's Gettysburg on a modern Windows system? This specifically being done on Windows 10. Now I will say there's one caveat I need to put up front, and that is the fact that uh, there are multiple versions of Sid Meier's Gettysburg out there, and I can't guarantee that my solution will work for yours. All I can really do is share that it worked for me. The version of Sid Meier's Gettysburg that I'm playing is the standalone CD-ROM that I got when I purchased the game. I believe I purchased it in 1999 because there's a uh, Electronic Arts 1999 copyright on the disc. Uh, so my assumption is that's that's when I bought it, or at least that's the the print date of the of the game. So I'm using the standalone Sid Meier's Gettysburg CD-ROM uh, for this test. I don't know if this will work for the Sid Meier's Civil War collection, which includes Sid Meier's Antietam and Gettysburg. I have a hunch it may not, um, but if you have it, it doesn't hurt anything to try. It's just some of what you see on my screen or the folders and files may be a little bit different for you if that's the case. Additionally, if you don't actually have the CD, again, I don't know if that'll work, um, but it's something you can try. So first off, I've got the CD in the tray. That's this icon up here. You've got Robert E. Lee, and you've got George Meade right here. Um, now, if we just try and open it by d either doing the auto run, which pulls up when you first put the disc in, or by uh, just kind of clicking on the CD and then clicking proceed, you're actually going to get an error that's going to pop up. You might get a pop-up that says you need to install direct play first. Um, if you do, that's fine. That will install, but the auto Lee will not run. The auto run will fail, and it'll give you an error message uh, when you try to do that. So... There is a way to get past this point, however. You might think clicking on this is kind of, all right, it failed and I'm done. Nope. What we're actually going to do is we're going to right-click on the CD drive. We're going to go ahead and choose the Open option. And then we're going to see all of the files that are currently on this CD disk. So again, this is the Sid Meier's uh, CD. It does re this, this process does require you to have the actual full CD, at least all the files on the CD. I, I'm assuming you need the CD itself, but... Um, maybe not. So if I'll go ahead and expand this out, you'll see we've got a wide range of files. And the one that we just tried was the Auto Lee executable. So I, I went up here and clicked Type just a second ago. It's easier to find things for me if I filter based on file type because all of the files that I'm going to want to show you here are all going to be application files. So it's a lot easier to find those if I just click this. So once I filter by file type, 
you'll see there's you know various files and folders which I'm not interested in at the moment uh, and then there's auto Lee which is what we just tried to run and which is what failed and again if we click on that uh, by itself it'll fail again uh, that's fine not really worried about that right now so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go ahead and click on setup so that's gonna get us past the proceed it's gonna get us straight into the installation setup for this game so we'll go ahead and click on the application called setup it'll take a moment here and then it should load something okay so I get a pop-up that says do you want to allow this application from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device I'll go ahead and hit yes and then we're gonna get this pop-up here uh, that is the beginning of the installation of Sid Meier's Gettysburg so at this point we're just gonna go ahead and hit next I'm gonna change the file that I want to install this in uh, I don't want to put this in my C drive. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it in my G drive. But this is just a general hard drive. This is a solid state drive that I put some stuff on. And we're going to be installing the, the game into this G drive. You can pick any drive you want uh, on your computer. Uh, most people probably have their C drive, which is their main hard drive. But in my case, uh, my games are going on my G drive. So um, once I go there, I'm going to go ahead and pick a folder that I want it to go to. So I don't actually have a folder that I want... Uh, this to end up in uh, yet so I'm actually gonna go ahead and cancel here uh, just bear with me one second guys actually let's go ahead and minimize this uh, we're gonna go back to the Samsung G Drive we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder and we're gonna just call it Sid Meier's Gettysburg alright so we've got a brand new empty folder right here Sid Meier's Gettysburg so we'll go ahead and close that we'll pull the installation back up and then we're going to go ahead and browse and we're going to go to the G drive and then we're going to go click on Sid Meier's Gettysburg because it doesn't create like automatically a new folder for whatever reason if you if you don't create a folder for this it's just gonna stack all the files in, in whatever folder you select so I do recommend you create a new file for Sid Meier's Gettysburg so you'll go ahead and do that you're gonna hit OK you've got your destination folder here and then you're just gonna hit next and uh, I always do the custom install. You can do the typical. That's fine, uh, I think, anyway. But for me, I've always done the custom. And I just manually add every item I can that's currently on the disk uh, to the hard drive. So we're going to save the videos, the additional art, the scenarios, the tutorials, the scenario intros. Make sure you select all of this. Make sure it's all checked. Uh, and as long as it's all checked, uh, then you're going to go ahead and um, just hit Next. Uh, you'll hit next again past this program folder and then you're gonna watch as the game installs on your hard drive and uh, it, Sometimes it installs slower than others for whatever reason um, But in that case it went pretty darn quick the last time I did it It took about five minutes, but in any event uh, it just went ahead and installed But uh, since we have a more modern version of DirectX, we don't need to install it. We'll hit no and the installation should finish here in a moment. We're not going to register. I don't think Fair Access really cares about registering a 20-year-old game at this point. I doubt the servers are even still set up. So go ahead and uncheck both these boxes. We're not going to play it yet, and we're not going to do the README yet. Okay, so we now have the game installed. If we go to the G drive, we can see in the Sid Meier's Gettysburg folder here, you've got a whole bunch of files that were just installed off the CD. And uh, that looks good, right? Well... Uh, we still will not be able to play the game quite yet. Uh, let's go ahead and filter by a type. You'll see here there's uh, the Lee application is here. We can click on it, but, and this is the executable. So the Lee file, this is the executable that should start the game. In this case, you can see the app can't run on my computer. Um, so that's unfortunate. Uh, if we had clicked those other options for Lee previously, it would have given us the same error message. So I think I, I X'd out of a a folder that popped up with some shortcuts, but it would have given us the same error if we had tried to run it. Uh, similarly, if we go back into the CD and we do it this way and we go to Lee, uh, we'll, well, I guess it just won't load at all. Um, but it's still, it's installed in the in the game, or in the, in the computer, it's installed here. We just can't play it. And that's because Sid Meier's Gettysburg is actually a 16-bit game. It was written for Windows 95, which was a 16-bit operating system. And Windows 7 and Windows 10 are 64-bit operating systems and don't support 16-bit programs. They don't go that far back in their compatibility. That's not really that important, though. It's not running. That's what matters, right? So let's go back to the G drive here. 
what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, open up Google because there's a patch that we need to download. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for Sid Meier's Gettysburg XP patch. You saw I had a V3 patch, um, but um, that's a, sort of a different story. This is around some preference things not working in the game uh, when you actually run it, uh, but that I can't fix for the same file incompatibility issues. So there are some minor issues with the game that might prevent you from enjoying it fully, but we can at least get it up and running here by doing the XP patch. First result that's going to come up is going to be File Planet. That's where I got the patch from. Uh, it's not available as far as I can tell through Fair Access anymore, but as long as you get the patch, that's what's that's what really that is what really matters. So you can see here it's not turn-based, but it's uh, for Axis, 6 megabytes, uh, the Gettysburg Windows 2000 XP compatibility update. We're going to go ahead and click download. Uh, we're going to get to this next screen. We'll go ahead and hit download again. And then on the bottom here you can see it's downloading this 6 megabyte file, uh, which is taking longer than I guess I would have expected. All right, so that's done. So we'll go to downloads here. So we'll open up the Windows File Explorer again. Uh, we'll go to downloads. And then you'll see here we've got the Windows uh, compatibility patch again. There's a, the version 3 I downloaded previously. I was kind of doing some uh, tinkering before, uh, and I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. So I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and grab this Windows 2000 compatibility. This one uh, doesn't even matter. shouldn't even be there. So uh, we'll just grab the Windows 2000 XP compatibility update. We're going to go ahead and cut it. So right-click, cut, Go back to the G drive or whatever uh, hard drive your game is on. Uh, go to, uh, well, actually we can just paste it here. And then we're going to go ahead and select the compatibility update. We'll go ahead and hit yes. It's going to open up a new executable where it's going to try and install the patch. So we'll go ahead and do that. Yes. It's going to auto detect where your game is installed. Just make sure this directory matches the file where the game is actually installed. Go ahead and hit next and then it'll install the patch. You'll get a pop-up that'll come up that'll give you some updates or information about the 2000 compatibility patch. And then if we go in here, and the recording is going to get a little wonky now uh, if this actually works. Um, but first you actually, before you go into the Lee application, um, the patch is now installed. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on Lee. Uh, you're going to go to compatibility. You're going to run this in compatibility mode. Make sure to run it in Windows XP. I don't know if it really matters which service pack. I always put the newest. So go ahead and uh, click the Run This in Compatibility mode. Select Windows XP, whichever service pack. Hit Apply, and then hit OK. And then go ahead and try and run the game. Uh, now, the screen's going to go wonky for a second here. It's going to start loading up. It's going to look like the screen got real small, but that's because the resolution changed. So I can actually expand this out. Uh, this is all just recording stuff, though. So the issues that you're seeing here with the screen and the resolution... All right, guys, uh, sorry about that. I'm cutting the audio out because it was way too loud and was kind of blocking me out. But the game is running now, and it's running as it, it normally does. The sound does work. You could hear it before, uh, but I, I, I'm shutting off the sound, re-recording re the audio so you can actually hear my voice. Uh, and at this point, you're running Windows, uh, you're running Sid Meier's Gettysburg and Windows 10. Uh, I wouldn't say flawlessly, but there it is. It's running in its glory on the screen in front of you. Um, with that being said, there are a few minor things uh, just to be aware of. First off, when the game does start up, it's going to bring you into this intro video and it's going to start the first battle. Um, this is basically the tutorial, so it just... The first time you load the game up, it jumps you right into the campaign. It jumps you into the campaign at the easy difficulty and uh, just kind of starts things. This is not the menu screen. You can actually just kind of click buttons to get out of this uh, and bring you into the actual battle. And then you can even quit out of the battle uh, if you like right away and just go to the main screen if you don't want, if you're not interested in fighting through the campaign right away, especially at easy difficulty. So sorry for that little bit of a yawn. It's close to 2 o'clock here, so... Um, I probably should go back and edit, but uh, anyway. Uh, with that being said, you can see here it's starting up the first scenario. You're playing as the uh, as the Union. There's some things to know. First off, uh, the game always sets you up in, in fast speed, um, and it always sets you on this easy difficulty here, so under this Heath difficulty. 
I always like to uh, first off disregard the tooltips because because you're a novice, because you're Heath that thinks you're a brand new player. But I always like uh, to change the speed settings because when it's set to fast, the game runs too quickly on a modern operating system. So what I always like to do is go up here to the top of the screen, uh, and I like to go to where it says game speed. Uh, if you don't even want to play this first battle, you can just quit uh, or you know click any of these other options with one exception. But I always like to go into game speed, change it to normal. It plays on a much better clip on a new uh, computer. Or if you need more time to do things slow or paused, you can also press the P button for pause. Uh, as you can see here, the battle starting. Um, with that being said, you're really all set to kind of do everything that you need to do with the exception of the, the preferences tab. So if we go up here to game and we go to uh, preferences, so uh, this option down here. Uh, if you click on that, the game is going to crash. And I'll show that in a moment here, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. You'll see something pops up for a second and then bam, the game crashes. It brings you back to the desktop. The desktop's distorted because I'm recording in a different resolution now um, due to the, the reso size not matching my monitor exactly. Uh, and we're back on the main screen. So we can actually go in and, and again, disregard what it looks like in the recording. It's not what it really looks like in my monitor. Uh, but we can go back in and we can restart the game and we can just play as we want to. Uh, you know, the only exception is going to be that preferences tab and why that preferences tab matters is, uh, and you can see here the, the fair axis, fair, fair axis, fair axis, uh, logo loading here. And now you're on the main screen of Sid Meier's Gettysburg. Since it's not the first setup anymore, it's going to just kind of load us into the main screen. But if we go back into a battle here, I just want to demonstrate the one limitation that I've noticed with this sort of fix is I can't get the version three patch to install. And that's the patch that I, that you saw earlier that I deleted and the other search result that you saw that patch makes some modifications to the preferences of the game. Uh, and it gives you some additional options to the preferences. So that patch actually, uh, means when you try and run the preferences tab in the game with the XP patch, which came later, uh, the game will crash because it's basically it's looking for different information than is there. Uh, the information doesn't match what it's looking for and it causes it to crash. The only big drawback from not being able to edit the preferences as far as I can tell, yeah, you can't really manage some of the, the settings and the options in there. But the only real drawback that I've noticed is the challenges in navigating the map uh, for uh, for this game. This game relies heavily on mouse cursors going to the edge of the map, and that causes you to move around the map so you can see the full picture of the battle. Right now we've got it nicely centered, but if we did want to go ahead and we wanted to move to the left, to the right, or we, you know, let's say we had some more troops coming onto the map, all you would have to do is you just drag your cursor over to the side, and then the, the screen will slide to the left. You can see there, though, things move very quickly, and that's because uh, this is an older game. Older games weren't really optimized to work on new, really powerful computers like what we have today, 20 years later, and as a result, things move very quickly like that. Sometimes you see games run really fast. I haven't noticed that in Sid Meier's Gettysburg, as long as you're using the normal speed, but you definitely fly around the map uh, with reckless abandon. The solution to that is what I'm doing right now, and that's where you just right-click on the spot on the map you want to go to. So you move your mouse cursor to where you want to go, and then you right-click, and it'll center the map on that location. Additionally, if you want to zoom in or out, you've got these options on the bottom of the screen that say zoom or unzoom. Uh, and if you ever get sort of separated from your unit and you're really trying to see, oh, you know, crap, you know, I, I don't have these units centered, I don't have... Uh, my map set up or, or the, the game set up to where I want it to be, then you can use this little compass on the bottom left-hand corner of the, of the screen down here. Uh, you can click on that, and it will center you back on whatever unit you uh, presently uh, are selected on. So um, I'll go ahead and click on this here in just a moment. Um, but you'll basically, we're up here in the left-hand corner of the map. Uh, we're kind of lost. And then uh, we zoom out, we still can't find anything. All you gotta do is click on this compass on the lower left, and just like that, as soon as you click it, it'll center you back on the unit you've already selected. So if you wanna move around the map, I recommend right-clicking to where you wanna go, or, uh, or 
uh, downloading a program that allows you to slow down mouse cursor scrolling for older games. Those do exist. This isn't a, a problem novel to Sid Meier's Gettysburg. It's a common problem across a lot of old games where things just move too quickly, mouse cursors especially, and there are programs out there to slow things down. So uh, with that being said, that's kind of the tutorial. That's how you install Sid Meier's Gettysburg on an old computer. That's how you get it running. And uh, hopefully this helps some of you. If this is something you guys want to see more of, please leave comments in the descriptions below. I'm not a huge techie. It'll be hard. You know, if, if you guys are having any challenges or issues, uh, I can't guarantee this will work for everybody. I just know it worked for me and I wanted to share uh, what worked for me. If it doesn't work for you, feel free to leave a comment in the description. Maybe we can all try and help you out, but no guarantees that it does work. Um, you know, I, I, I know there's a lot of variations of the CD uh, between different versions and I'll do my best to help you, but uh, again, I'm not I'm not tech support, so uh, I just hope this helps some of you. Uh, and uh, if you've got an old disc, why don't you dust it off, give it a try, and, and let us know if it works. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.